Hands up, who wants fries? I'm here to help take your french fry game to the next level. Crispy, delicious fries, we will serve as a main and a side, and another way which will blow your mind and mouth. But before we get to serving, let's take a look at the fries. First things first, the potato. You need one with a good starch content, like the Maris Piper here in the UK. Now, to cut the potato, I'm actually using a serrated knife to get a jagged edge, which is really going to help crisp up these fries. To get the french fry shape we all like, we need to cut the edges to get a consistent shape. Don't worry about these scraps though, I have a handy tip so they don't go to waste. Gather them all up and get a deep-sided oven-proof ramekin. Coat it liberally in butter and start stacking the slices. Hit with some salt halfway and you essentially have a simple no-thrills pom anna. Whack that in the oven for 35 minutes or so or until the edges crisp up and voila, a lovely quick potato treat. Now back to the fries. Uniformity is what we are looking for here, and relatively thin, or they will take too long to cook. Slice lengthways, and then again, about one centimeter each way for that perfect french fry baton. And you can see we got some spikes here to help the oil create a crispy exterior. Remember to keep the cut potato in a bowl of cold water to prevent the browning from the oxygen. This will also help begin the process of removing excess sugars, vital for a good texture. Once all your fries are cut, make sure to rinse them under a tap for a whole minute this allows us to avoid the long soaking period normally required. Then get a large saucepan and fill with cold water and heavily season with salt. Next, add some white vinegar, about a tablespoon per litre. This is a handy trick someone discovered where the acid in the vinegar does an excellent job of breaking down the sugars so the chips are no longer soggy. Add all the chips to the saucepan and onto the hob to bring to the boil. You'll notice due to the vinegar a lot of foam rise to the top which I find useful to remove as the water heats up. Once we've reached boiling, turn the heat down to a very gentle simmer for 10 minutes. We are essentially trying to cook the potato 90% of the way while also removing the sugars. You don't want an aggressive boil as this will overwork the potatoes. After 10 minutes, remove the fries with a slotted spoon. They should still be relatively firm at this point. Then drain on a tray lined with paper towel. Be sure to spread them out in a single layer so they have the best chance of properly drying. What you will notice with these fries is if you shake them they have a lot of give but don't break. This is what allows us to crisp them up in the fryer while keeping the inside perfectly cooked. Set these aside for 10 minutes to cool off and that gives me the chance to say if you're enjoying this content be sure to give this video a like, it really helps the channel. And why not subscribe to get notified of future videos. Right, now the fries have dried out. It's time for the first fry. Heat up some oil with a high smoke point, peanut or rapeseed oil works quite well, in either a fryer or Dutch oven, and fry your chips in batches for no more than one minute. This is a flash fry to finish the cooking without developing any color. As you can see here, leave it a bit longer and the potatoes can blister. This will lead to overcooked fries. So we'll try again for exactly one minute, and this time you can see the fries are still pale in color are fluffed up inside. Drain again onto paper towel or a tea towel if you've run out like me. Then this time we're putting it in the fridge for 30 minutes. The air is much drier in there and we need these properly dry for the final fry. While we wait it gives us the perfect opportunity to whip up my homemade french fry seasoning and trust me it's worth it. To make this we will need one tablespoon thyme oregano and dried parsley and two tablespoons paprika and rosemary salt. You can make your own rosemary salt by simply combining equal parts rosemary and good kosher salt and blending together in a spice grinder or pestle and mortar. The result is a really useful seasoning to have available. It goes really great with lamb. With all that said, go ahead and put the ingredients into a pestle and mortar and grind it down for a minute or so to get everything nicely incorporated. Once that's done, it's on to my secret weapon, an icing sugar sifter. If you can get yourself one of these, I highly recommend it. I saw a restaurant using one and it makes such a difference when coating your fries. Time to finish these fries. Bring them out of the fridge, then in the same oil as before, and be sure to check the temperature is at 190 degrees Celsius. In batches, cook the fries for four minutes or until golden brown. Let's watch the magic happen. Crispy yet fluffy fries, ready to be gobbled up. Don't you just love it? 
Drop those immediately into a bowl. The heat and oil is going to help the seasoning stick. And then grab your sifter, add two or three dustings of the french fry seasoning and give it a good old toss. Drain for a few minutes on a paper towel again to get rid of any excess oil and admire your work of art. Beautiful salty flavour, perfectly crisp and so fluffy inside. It's really the perfect chip for me. You could also just hit them with some rosemary salt. Powdered form of the salt sticks really well to the fries. As long as you have salt in some form, we can move on to the best bit. Serving them. We'll start with a guilty pleasure of mine. Fries of war. This is an adaptation of a Dutch meal called patat oorlog. Normally served with mayonnaise, curry sauce and diced onion, I prefer a classic mayo and ketchup mix with some chopped gherkins instead. The sweetness of the ketchup and the saltiness from the gherkins makes for a much better mouthful, while keeping the same texture throughout as the original. It looks a mess, but as the name suggests, it's kind of meant to be. But wow, does it not half taste good. But maybe you're thinking more traditional and serving them as a side. The key is to do the fries justice. And I'll actually use some oven fries here to show you how if you nail the presentation, even these can look good. So I'm grabbing a long surface I can spread the fries out across. A dark color will give a nice contrast and help them stand out. Use accessories like a sauce pot to frame the fries and the result will be a really nice side plate that will have your guests reaching out for these before they've even had a chance to look at their main course. You can be creative too. For something more themed, you could use a bucket or a basket to complement a burger or some fish. It adds a playful edge to your dish while still making the fries stand out. But finally, we come to my favorite way to serve fries, the king of subs. It's club sandwich-esque, but I actually had it for the first time on holiday in Greece and I have never looked back. It makes any sandwich so much better than I ever thought it could. Piling the fries on top is the way to showcase its power. Tasty and crispy, Sandwich time will never be the same again. Ooh, I'll have that. It definitely looks most impressive in a sub form, and I'll add a cross section for good measure, but don't let that stop you from enjoying it in your next sliced bread sandwich. And there we have our three ways to serve fries. The clear winner for me though is the king of subs. Absolutely scrumptious. Let me know your favorite in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more videos like this. Until then, Get cooking and may the Zen be with you.